Hello, John Webb, Scottish Sci Fi Scottish Sci Fi Co UK, Scottish Sci Fi Com. Follow me on Twitter at DVD Blake. Friend me on Facebook. Um, something to do with Instagram and all that other YouTube stuff. Subscribe, thumbs up, down, go away, whatever. Uh, hello, um, we're still in lockdown. I've kind of stopped opening bottles for a bit because I've got far too many open bottles. Um, so I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, and it's something I've been meaning to do for quite a while. Um, and I've been prompted by somebody else, but um, it's something I wanted to do, you know, just like, just, <sighs> I'm doing it now. Anyway, so what I'm doing is a little bit of comparison piece on glassware. Hello, Morgan. And um, do not, don't. Don't mess around. Don't do the dominance thing today, yeah? Don't do the... Oh, let me see what I can tip off the side. There's far too many glasses for you to choose from. Good boy. God. Right. So, um, I'm going to try to approach this as scientifically as I possibly can, but the trouble is there are so many variables in this kind of game that you just can't get everything, and you certainly... There will be somebody who doesn't agree with what I'm doing because of X. And I'll agree with them because you just can't get everything right. You know, I'd like to do this with a cash strength whiskey probably. But then again, I don't want to... I don't want to pour that much whiskey. Because it's only me who's going to drink it and I don't want to have a hangover. Um, so I've gone for, as far as my uh, whiskey of choice for doing this, I've gone for the Yamazaki 12 year old because it's a lovely drop. And... Um, it's uh, it's nice, it's accessible as it is without messing around with drops of water and all the rest of it. Uh, 43%, um, it's very tasty, well balanced and it's kind of a, a good benchmark kind of whiskey to use as um, an aroma experiment on these glasses. Um, and let's face it, it's, it's more about aroma that you're getting from glasses than it is about um, the flavour because the flavour is going to be consistent. The glass might be awkward to drink out of, which is something I'm going to talk about. Um, but by and large, it's more about glass shape, which focuses uh, aroma and evaporation and sort of like the ability to get to those aromas and all that kind of thing. So um, there are just so many, there's too many glasses. At the bottom line, we'll make this very, very clear right at the beginning. Drink whiskey how you are happy drinking whiskey, okay? I'm not here to tell you what glass is great. I, I'm going to have my own foibles it's, it, it comes down to um habit more than anything else it's like if i'm reviewing a whiskey if i'm if i'm really assessing a whiskey i will always use a glen can it's what i've used at the beginning as a uh, for those that is a glen can that is your basic glen can glass um stubby glass base bulbous middle bit uh with a, a narrower top to allow swirlage and focal points of Sniffage. God, technical terms, wonderful. Um, so I will always use a Glen Ken because because that's just what I've used at the beginning and I want that consistency. Now other glasses have come out which are, kind of emulate the Glen Ken in a certain way. I mean, I particularly, I do like the, um, what do they call this? They call this the ultimate, ultimate tasting glass, I think it is. Do your research, John. Yeah, whatever. And these uh, these were basically created specifically for the Whiskey Show in London. Um, and they're great, but they emulate the shape of a Glen Cairn. So it's no point putting this alongside the Glen Cairn as such, because by and large, it's the same shape. It's a wee bit smaller, but it's made for a festival. Um, it's great for tastings. Cause I, I mean, if I'm doing a tasting at home, a tweet tasting, anything like that, and I've got three or four drams, I'll generally use this because I've got a shed load of them. Um, I've got a shed load of Glen Cairns as well, so I'll mix and match depending, but um, depending on what's clean. Um, and um, that's that's kind of the way it goes. Morgan's drinking. Oh, right, you're gonna have to excuse the fountain going for a minute because Morgan's trying to drink out of it. He's like looking at it. What's going on? Why? Anyway, so I'll switch it off when he goes. And now he's not drinking. Forget. Um. Okay, so that's the very basic Glen Cairn, which I generally use and I do favour, just from the point of view of it's a consistent and generically available um it, it's just like the consistent tasting glass for whiskey now it doesn't mean it's necessarily the best or anything like that i mean i really like a snifter glass as well and that's a particularly big one that doesn't mean that does i've been watching a lot of the office um and 
the matter. And um, that, that, uh, that just does the job really well as well. All right, go away then, I'll switch fat off there. Git. Um, in a similar vein to that though, you've got this style of snifter glass. Uh, this one's particularly Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, but there are many that create them like this. Put that there, Jonathan. Um, and that's, again, it, it's all similar kind of point of shape, you know, a, a bulbous bottom <laughs> with um, a uh, narrow top, again, to, to focus focus the aromas and all that kind of thing. It's very similar to the Glen Cairn in that way. And, you know, it's going to be interesting because I've never compared glasses. This is a first for me. So I've never actually gone glass, 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 different, 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 sniff, 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 sniff. This is a first. It's going to go horribly bad or it's just going to go nowhere. Um, that's life. Um, so, uh, talked about that. Um, again, on the Glen Cairn side, you can get these wonderful, nifty little tiny Glen Cairns. And that's, they're awesome for trains and um and tastings again and um I, I really really like these and you know if i'm going <laughs> if i'm going into town with a on a tasting uh for a tasting or whatever and i want to have a glass on me just in case and a couple little vials of amber fluid um then this is great to have in your bag um just in case um and then you you know you start off with the uh as far as <laughs> glasses are concerned the traditional tumbler shape you know that's a really nice weighty roxy kind of like heavy glass and that's that's great for drinking whiskey out of if you don't really want to smell it because you can't say that you know I've, I've poured one in there just for giggles but uh but and just to prove a point because i've not done this side by side i remove this glass from the equation before i drop it um uh yeah but if we start the thing Getting your nose in there and getting close to the liquid, you're dipping your nose in it and it's kind of like... You can smell it. I'm not reviewing the whiskey. I'm not going to say what I'm getting. I'm not going to talk about anything like that. I'm just going to comment on it if there's something to comment about. That is, I can smell a very faint amount of whiskey in that. And that's just for drinking it. Oh, I'm not going to neck it now. I'll neck it at the end. Um, another interesting glass, which I'm not going to use in this tasting. Um, you get a lot of these at distilleries, and it's a lovely distillery glass. Again, same idea, bulbous bottom and a more narrow neck. And these are just great for, these are like a step up from tumblers, essentially. Um, you know, there's a little bit of effort there for, for having a whiff. But at the end of the day, it's a tumbler. It's a fancy shaped tumbler. Right, let's move that out of the way because I'm not doing that. So the glasses that I'm going to look at are, nearly eight minutes in, I said nothing. The glasses I'm going to look at are, the tumbler, already well, kind of done that, pointless. Um, the Glen Cairn, because it's my benchmark. We've got the, I'm going to call this a snifter. Yeah, just call it a snifter. I don't know what, I don't know if there's a proper name for it. I'm calling it a snifter. Um, so it's a snifter. Um, this wee one, which is, uh, it's, um, it's a kind of a, it's like the Irish version of a Glen Cairn, I'm going to say, and probably get it completely wrong and want and a million Irish whiskey drinkers want to kill me now. Um, it's called a, and this is where I really will want to be killed. Uh, I think it's called a Tirith or a Trith, or I've just made that up from some fantasy uh, sci-fi thing. Um, and it's an interesting one. I kind of wasn't going to do it, but, um, but I thought it's an interesting shape. It's a unique shape, so I want to... I hope my nose is working. I hope the bloody COVID ain't got me. Right, um, we'll, right, okay, we'll go back there. Uh, the next one is this meat glass. Now, this was engineered by experts. This is apparently the ultimate whiskey glass, released a few years ago by some people uh, who wanted to sell a different style of whiskey glass. I, I call it a cauldron. It's very much like a cauldron. This is like a witch's glass, um, in my opinion. I'm not, <laughs> I don't mean to diss. I'm just being, I'm just saying it as it is. I think it's, interesting i don't see the point of that and i think it's going to be difficult to drink out of we'll get there apparently there's a sweet spot to get in sniffing this i'm not entirely sure where it is we'll work on that um the next one which really did interest me all the time it's coming out because it makes a it makes it really nice when you turn the whiskey in the glass it's the norland glass um it's a really interesting construction and it's kind of 
again it's got this outer glass shell and then the inner glass bit and the inner glass bit once again is kind of a bit Glencairney but it doesn't come in quite as much it's got an incredibly thick lip on there for drinking out of makes it kind of awkward um it's also got these little i don't know if you're going to see them it's got these little uh ridges inside which are supposed to give an increased area of surface for the the liquid to essentially evaporate off of and release more aromas we'll get to that and see uh, and then final the final one which i've never actually i've never used before and i've had this sat there for donkey's years but it's it so looks so fragile i'm scared of using it so this is the first time i've ever used this glass this is a 1920s blenders glass so it's a replica of a blenders glass uh, from the 1920s I say it twice um and this was constructed by a bunch of uh, or recreated by a bunch of whiskey geeky nerds who are good people and um and uh, this is available on the whiskey exchange it's quite a pricey glass it's like 25 30 quid but it's it's a light bulb. It's a light bulb of a glass. Um, but you, you couldn't get any more of a bulbous bottom um, and a narrower top. So if anything's going to be sniff. Okay, right. That has immediately kind of changed the game. I've, I swear to Christ, I have never had anything out of this glass before. I've literally just put something in it for the first time. Mainly because I'm buggered if I know I'm going to clean it without destroying it. Um, anyway... <laughs> Right, I don't think it'll survive in a dishwasher, and I'm lazy. So we'll see what happens with that. Right, so let's let's just, 11 minutes in, done, uh, nothing. Right, okay, so let's, uh, oh, how do we do this scientifically? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the gun can, and I'm gonna take the, a glass. I'm gonna go sniff, sniff, and if it's better, whichever glass is better stays in my hand. Okay, makes sense, right? That should be easy. Whichever glass smells nicer, whichever, glass presents the more the deeper aroma the more complex aroma I keep in my hand okay right <laughs> nothing something this is quite a light fragrant whiskey to taste this uh, test this with I, I imagine a a cash strength would be increasingly interesting to try this with. Probably burn your nasal hairs off, but that's fine as well. Um, and and then there's been lots of questions about do you dilate, don't you dilate, does it change things? That's just too many variables, okay? So basic, basic premium whiskey. Um, same amount of liquid in each glass. I weighed out the same amount of liquid in each glass. So there is 12 millilitres in each glass just to be fair because that's the other thing some of these bigger glasses smaller glasses shape of the bulbous bottom um you know will favor a, a certain amount of liquid to another so kept it straightforward scientific a set amount in each glass okay so clearly anyway tumblers just for drinking out of man you can't sniff out of that bye bye tumbler Okay, on to the next one. Blencairn versus Snifter. Now this would be quite interesting because that Snifter has actually got a smaller um, port. Should we call it that? Smaller entry. A smaller hole. I don't know, whatever you want to call it, right? Okay, lovely, 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 lovely. Hmm. I never thought what to do in the event of a tie, so let's be very careful about this. I'm gonna have some coffee grains on hand for. It's a lovely whiskey. It is a really nice whiskey. Okay. All right. Stop sniffing it. I think I'm getting slightly more out of the snifter glass. In all honesty, I think I'm getting slightly more out of the snifter. <sighs> I said I'd keep the winner in my hand. That's kind of thrown my whole ethos of... Uh, 
<laughs> That's not what I expected. Um, and this could be the case quite frequently. God, these are hard to hold one in each hand. Right. I already know what's going to win out of this because this is a lovely looking glass. The, the point of this, don't drop it. The point of this little, there's like a little ledge on the bottom to hold it really comfortably like that. Because I find it really difficult to hold stemmed glasses like that that aren't more ergonomically fitted. I feel like, I'm going to drop it. Anyway, stupid. Anyway, right, like this. This, uh, this is on edge. I'm on edge with this. This is comfy. Anyway. <sighs> Winner. Um, I actually can't smell an awful lot in that glass. It's a lovely glass. I imagine you're going to sip now because I'm gasping. It's bloody awkward to drink out of as well. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tira fans, or. I'm sorry. No. Loser. Sorry. It's awkward to drink out of. And I don't drink out, I drank out of this one in fairness. That's easy to drink out of. Sorry. It's not all about drinking out of, but I'm getting far more aromas from this than the other one anyway. So, anyway, on to the next one. God help us. Right. <laughs> Shouldn't be like that, a bit of a neat glass. I bought these glasses, by the way. I, I, I haven't been gifted any glasses I, well that terrified was actually gifted because it was in a tweet tasting but i'd never seen the glass before that um but everything else bought just so you know no favoritism or anything like that this is just me talking i don't even know how to hold this cauldron I don't even know how to sniff out of this properly. I know that there is actually a video, an instructional video on where how, where and how to sniff out of this. That's not working. You kind of really got to get your head in there and get your neck in there. So a long neck is preferable. Um, definitely no kind of back or shoulder issues to, to sniff out of this glass. And preferably not even a, a a brow would be handy. Oh, I don't know. I need a training course on this, guys. Nope. I don't even need to go back. I don't understand this glass. I would love to understand this glass. I'm clearly doing something wrong. Maybe I just don't have the nose for it. Like the physical size nose or something. Maybe you need... A straw up each nose, I don't know. Um, and drinking out of it, I've never... I, I almost want to chew on the side of it. It's like, if this was made of sugar glass, it'd be great. Because you just eat it. And then drink out of it when it's proper shape. Sorry! That is ridiculous to drink out of. How the fuck... I mean, how do you drink out of it when it gets... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a fun thing with that at the end. Yeah. Jesus. Right. <clears throat> okay. Still good. Still works. This is gonna be interesting. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna reset my nose. Sorry, if you ever get this and it happens. And I shouldn't need to reset my nose because we're sniffing the same whiskey, but at the end of the day, I kinda wanna reset. If you're ever doing a tasting at home, preferably, because otherwise you'd have to carry around a tin of coffee with you everywhere, which isn't a bad idea in all fairness. You never know when you're going to need a brew. Um, but reset, <laughs> way to reset your nose. A lot of people, they say do that. Sniff your, sniff your skin. But nowadays, if you do that in public, people think you're ill and they'll run a mile. So don't do that unless you're ill. And then I'll run a mile from you. I won't run, I'll, work, I'll walk fast, I don't run. <laughs> reset, okay. All right. Flipping the reset button on the nose. It's really good doing that, actually. It really works very well. I learned that when I were at Costco one day and they were doing perfumes. Anyway. It's 
really is a delightful whiskey. Sorry. Okay. Right, I can. S it's better than the neat glass. I'm wondering about the higher strength stuff now. I'm going to do this again with higher strength stuff. Like one day. Not now, but someday. It's nice, it does actually do a job. It's not a bad glass for the smell side of things. Still wins. Again, it comes down to, uh, it comes down to the size of the hole in the top, uh, the, the size of the entry. The, the uh, What do you call that thing in the top of the glass? The way you bung your nose. Getting angry now. <laughs> right. Yeah, still winning. Okay, um, and to drink out of this thing, because it's got a big lip. Okay. You can misjudge how much you drink out of this. Difficult to take a sip out of. And because of the way it bulges over, it tends to not concentrate the liquid into one location, so you might get a little bit on the side of your chops. Not one to imbibe from if you've already had a few i can imagine this is just end up being like airplane you just end up with a soaked beard if you haven't got a beard then it's just dribbly chin um right on to the fragile god it's so it really is it feels fragile i know they they hold this like this don't they i see them i see them doing this god I worry about that snapping That's a heck of a glass, eh? <laughs> That's funny. Um, right. I do, I, I do like this glass. I like it. I like the look of it. I've still not drank out of it yet. This is the first time. Jesus Christ. There's just so much coming. That's such an attack. You don't need to even get your nose in there and there is so much more of an intensity of smell it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous right okay i'm swirled a lot in there so let's swirl let's give it a fair because you swirl this you can see how much of the inside of that's coating so let's try to do that i can't do it with my left hand <laughs> that's really hard work i give that a good swirl okay Awesome. Holy Jesus. <laughs> that's insane. The amount that's coming off of that in that glass is crazy time. It really is. You don't need to and and it's the alcohol you know, it's really coming up, so you actually don't need to get your nose in there. That's a hell of a glass. Okay. So from as as non-biased a scientific point of view, it's winner winner chicken dinner for the nineteen twenty Splendor Glasser. Um it's incredible. Uh, that's there is so much coming out of there. It's just doing all the job that the heat and and just it, 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 there's there's it it that's it that's the winner if you want to sniff your whiskey really concentrate on your whiskey and intently find and explore the liquid this is the way to do it in the nasal way now drinking from it i'll still probably use a glen can just because it's easy i really need to get more of these now because i'm just going to Break this one. I need a backup. I need a backup glass because I'm going to start using one of these. <sighs> I'd like to. Can you redesign this bit? Can you make it more like a Glen Cairn with a big ass bulbous? Would that be too much to ask, or do we need the? Is there is there is there any? <laughs> I don't want to knock it, but is there any logistics in having a big stem other than looking posh? 
I want a practical 20s blenders glass. How's that sound? Is that possible? Oh, I'm going to get a kick in for that. <laughs> but it's an amazing glass. Okay. Sippy drinky time. It works. Your neck has to go back a bit further. Let's try that on this. Ridiculous now. So, to drink from this, easy. Head's barely going back now. To drink from this one, now that would have been the same angle. That's the same angle. You're not getting that liquid. If you've got a bad neck, this isn't going to work. Exercise as well as function. Yeah? Go get your neck back. If you're happy to give your neck a stretch, this is the winner winner chicken dinner from the glass department. What do you reckon, Morg? Don't give her monkeys. So, tried and tested, this is the winner without a shadow of a doubt. Unless you've got a bad neck, in which case you've got to go back to the snifter. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, um, that'll do. Is there anything else I wanted to say? There'll probably be a new glass next year. There'll probably, there'll probably be another a, a, a post-COVID, socially distant, aware... Oh, they'll probably get bloody longer stems, won't they? So you can share it. I don't know. That's stupid. Don't give them ideas. I would l I'd really like it sort of like a short stem anyway. It's not going to happen just for me. Morgan's up for his water again. Let's switch that back on. I'm not going to make him wait. I'm not going to make him wait for a stupid YouTube video, are we? There we go. Good boy. So, I don't know what else I've got to say, to be honest. Um, this is the winner. Nicely done. I need to get another one of these buggers now because uh, ah, it'll top off an order, I suppose. Think of it like that. If you're buying a 70, 75 quid bottle of whiskey on the whiskey exchange, bung one of these in your glass, you get a fibre off with a postage, don't you? Yeah, so you can top up an order and get a stonkingly good glass. Yeah, good idea. That is really good. It's really good for sniffing. R ridiculously good. Not so good for drinking. In honesty, truthful, have a good neck or do a bit of yoga, a bit of whiskey yoga. Upward sip, all that. Right, that'll do. I'm going to finish off all that whiskey. <laughs> Chuck it all in the tumbler. Um, cheers. This is what a tumbler is good for. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, God. That was nice. <laughs> Stay. Ugh. It's good whiskey. It's just. You shouldn't do that. Don't neck it. Oh. Eat when you drink. Um, stay safe. Stay in. Keep yourself well. So that when all this crap is over, I can see you all again. Okay? Take care. Oh, bollocks. Language. Good show. Cheers!